This is Dr. K. Jagannayaki, Professor in MBA Department, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dundegar. So today I would like to discuss about graphic representation of data. So in the last sessions, I have discussed about the data processing. After collection of data, the data can be arranged in the form of tables. Some data we used to project in the form of diagrams and graphs. So the collected data can also be present in the form of diagrams and graphs. So graphical representation, it is one type of presentation and analyzing the data in uh, for effective visualization. It exhibits the relationship between data, ideas, information and concepts in a diagram. So visual impact will be more effective than the tables. So that is the reason even an ordinary layman can also easy to understand and they can able to analyze the data projected in diagrams and graphs effectively. So it is easy to understand and it is one of the most important learning strategies and it depends on the type of information in a particular domain. So what type of data would you like to present so it depends on that if it is numerical or else descriptive. So based on that, we used to select the appropriate tool to analyze the data. So the need for graphic and diagrammatical representation is that due to visual impact, the data presented through graphic and diagrammatical presentation, they can be easily grasped and remembered than the tabulated data. So that is one of the major advantage with diagrams and graphs. So transform data in simple, clear and effective manner that should be possible with the help of diagrams and graphs. Attract the attention of the reader particularly when we used to construct a graph or diagram with multiple colors with different pictures used in the presentation. So that's how we can make it attractive to the viewers and better appeal even to a layman. The person who do not have the knowledge about a particular subject, he can be understand the concept very easily with the help of the graphs and diagrams. So it is better understanding and save considerable time. So if it is numerical data and you are trying to analyze the numerical data, by using appropriate statistical tools, people they may not possess the knowledge what type of method you are using, how you are going to analyze. So it will be better with the diagrams and graphs and show highly complex relations among variables. So whatever relation or association between the variables under study that can be projected in the diagram and also it makes them much clear understanding of the picture. It facilitates interpretation and analysis in a most effective manner. And it is also helpful in the depiction of need, median, mode, skewness, correlation and regression and other analytical tools which are used in the statistics. And it has certain limitations. The first limitation is that not possible to maintain 100% precision. Whereas in case of numerical data, which is mentioned in the form of tables, there we can able to maintain 100% precision, but that may not be possible in terms of graphs and diagrams. And graphs and diagrams, they cannot be a complete substitute for tabulation. So we cannot say that graphs or diagrams are 100% substitutes to the tables. Tables are used for mathematical treatment but whereas graphs and diagrams you cannot use them for further algebraic treatment. So when too many details are to be presented, these devices fail to present them without loss of clarity. So we can able to show the data, we can analyze them with the help of graphs and diagrams and we never lose clarity at the time of presenting 
the numerical data in terms of graphs and diagrams. In those cases where mathematical treatment is required, these devices turn out to be extremely unsuitable. So like the numerical data, whatever we are tabulating, they are amenable for statistical analysis. So in that case, these two tools like diagrams and graphs, they may not be appropriate measures of presenting the data. Small differences in large measurements cannot be properly brought out by means of graphs and diagrams that we can project in, in case of tables. And particularly when ratio graphs or multidimensional figures are used, they may be beyond comprehension of the common man. So certain graphs, if they are simple, we can easily understand. But in case of like multidimensional diagrams kind of thing, it may not be that much easy to understand by the layman. So a proper understanding of these figures need to some kind of expertise on the part of the reader. So if they know about all these di diagrams, then only they can be able to read the diagram. Otherwise, it may not be that much easy to understand these graphs and diagrams. Then coming to the guidelines used in the construction of graphs and diagrams, uh, the first one is title. So, either it may be a table, a graph or diagram. The title should be clear and distinctive from the rest of the chart. So, it should be given prominence by using bold letters either at the top or below the graph or the diagram. Then next we need to specify the scale. The scale used for presentation of data, it should be appropriate keeping in mind the availability of space and the need for proper presentation. So, what type of data we are using? Um, for example, if you are talking about the graph, we should specify the scale, how many units you are taking on x-axis and how many units you are taking on y-axis. So, each and every unit we have to specify in the graph or diagram. So, both horizontal and vertical scales should be specified if they are different from each other. If both are same, they are also we have to specify the scale. The third one is size and proportion. So a major guideline is that the size should neither be too large nor too short. So as regards the proportion of length and breadth, it is suggested that the ratio of this is root 2 is to 1. So any side, either you are talking about vertical or horizontal, it can be a longer side which should be broadly be a little less than 1.5 times of the shorter side. Then next one is footnote. So sometimes we need to give some kind of clarification about the particular graph or diagram. So in that case, we need to mention from we have taken the particular data that should be projected in, term, in the form of a footnote which should be given below the chart. And source note is that when the data taken from some external source which is necessary to specify this source below the chart that should be specified under source note. Then attractive presentation. So a chart can be made attractive if the statistician gives a due consideration to several aspects such as color shades, we can, if you want to show some kind of difference between the items, then we need to use different types of colors, different shades, the size and proportion and proper lettering and so on, so that we can make it attractive to the viewers. The next one is selection of appropriate graphs, how to select the appropriate graph or suitable graphs. So, in choosing a proper technique, we should be guided by the following consideration. First of all, we should know what is the purpose. So, a major consideration while choosing a particular technique is the purpose of presenting the data. So, what is the purpose? Why we are using a particular graph or chart? So, that purpose we need to mention. Basing on that, we need to select the appropriate chart or diagram. Then, Circumstances of use, another consideration is that 
a diagram which is to be used there are several ways in which it can be put to use so different people they will present their data by using different types of diagrams with different dimensions different proportions and different colors so subject matter to be presented so the choice is also guided by the nature of the data to be presented if virginal da data to be presented a simple graph can be a proper choice so if you want to project the virginal data as it is then we should prefer a simple graph but if the data are in terms of ratios of change then an appropriate device could be a semi logarithm graph so again it depends what type of data we are taking into consideration basing on that we have to select appropriate graphs the next one is time and resource available so some charts need a lot of time and more resources before they can be used a map or a multi colored pictorial representation would need far more resources and lot of time than simple graphs or simple bar diagrams the next type of audience finally a major consideration before the statistician should be the type of audience before whom the presentation is to be made so for the general public more refined and elaborate devices would be most unsuitable and simple time series graph or simple bar diagrams would be more suitable in contrast if the tables or the data meant for professionally qualified or otherwise quite com competent the statistician should prefer a more elaborate device and graph devices basically there are two major categories of graphs the natural scale graph and the second one is ratio scale graph and most of the cases will prefer the former one that is natural scale graph within the natural scale graph we have two broad categories time series graphs and frequency graphs so time series graphs as the name itself implies it shows the data against time which could be any measure such as hours days weeks months and years for example if you are taking this particular example like you have given yearly data and sales over a period of 5 years so that data we used to specify for last 5 years along with how many sales made during the 5 years 220 240 like that so using this data we used to construct a graph so like that we'll consider time period as one of the major variable in case of the time series graph and line graph is another one the time period is measured along with x axis and the corresponding values are on y axis the next type of diagram is line plot so it shows the frequency of data on a given number line so here we used to take the number line 1 to 9 and x is placed or cross above a number line each time when the data occurs again for example here two there are two crosses it means two repeated twice in case of three it is showing three times so three repeated thrice in the given data and four repeated only once so like that we can able to analyze the data and next type of graph is range graph as the name implies this graph shows the range that is highest and lowest of a certain product or item under reference so it may also show the average by taking an average of the two extreme values so in simple terms if you are talking about range range is nothing but it is the difference between largest value and smallest value so this difference we are we can able to specify on a graph
the next type of graphs are known as frequency graphs so under which we have histograms frequency polygon then frequency curve so we have different types of frequency graphs available in the statistics so histogram is that it uses bars to represent the frequency of numerical data that are organized into intervals so 0 to 20 20 to 40 40 to 60 60 to 80 and so on so since all the intervals are equal and continuous all the bars will have the same width and next one is frequency polygon a frequency polygon like any polygon consist of many angles a histogram can be easily transformed into a frequency polygon just by joining the midpoints of the rectangles by straight lines so the same frequency poly polygon if you are talking about the class intervals 0 to 20 20 to 40 40 to 50 sorry 40 to 60 60 to 80 and so on so these class intervals we have to divide into mid values by taking upper limit plus lower limit by 2 so in case of this 10 30 50 70 so just by taking the mid values and join all the midpoints then we'll get frequency polygon the next one is frequency curve a frequency polygon is angular as midpoints or class intervals are joined by straight lines when a frequency polygon is smooth end and rounded at the top it is known as a frequency curve so there is a slight difference between these two on account of smoothening angularities of a frequency polygon the frequency curve becomes more suitable for the purpose of interpolation the next cumulative frequency curve are ogive curves this is another type of frequency curve a frequency distribution a cumulative frequency distribution it enables us to know how many observations are above or below a certain value so a cumulative frequency curve is also known as ogive curve it which transforms the given series into a cumulative series so this should be done in two ways less than or more than series especially when you are going to compute median we can find these two types of curves in the distribution one is less than another one is more than series so if you consider these two the intersection of less than curve and more than curve that point gives the median value the next type of curve is known as z curve so this graphic presentation is commonly used in business the name of the device is derived because it takes the shape of letter z it is a combination of three curves the curve based on original data the curve based on the cumulative frequency and third one the curve based on moving totals so as we are using the combination of these three curves together it resembles the shape of z so that is the reason this curve is also known as z curve then next ratio scale graphs a graph which uses logarithmic values instead of absolute values which are of two types semi logarithmic and logarithmic so in an exclusively logarithmic scale both the horizontal and vertical scales show the logarithmic values instead of absolute values in other case only the vertical scale it shows logarithmic values and the horizontal scale as usual on the absolute values so therefore it is known as semi logarithmic scale which is more commonly used than the exclusive logarithmic scale thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates